And then uh, this will get us started into the next section of the presentation. So the application process at an art school is going to be very similar across the board, but there are slight differences. So these are things that you need to keep in mind. And uh, much like Ed USA mentioned, uh, it's all about the research. So I always suggest starting a spreadsheet and keeping track of all of that information of when are their deadlines? What do they require? What kind of portfolio requirements do they have, et cetera? Because it'll kind of help keep you straight. Um, but a number of schools do use the Common App, but not all schools use this. So I am the only school here today that does not use the Common App. So that means you would have to apply directly through my school website at it on a CCS application for our program, whereas all of the other schools you can uh, you can select on the common application. But then there are schools that have both opportunities. So CCA is on the common app, but then you can apply directly through their website. So it's really your choice on whether you want to do that direct application or if you are required to do that common app application. And then um, portfolios are very important for the application process, especially when looking at um, art schools. Uh, it's often best to think about a school that requires a portfolio coming in will require that your portfolio be strong leaving the program. So that's a really good um, way to gauge your development and gauge your skill set. So a lot of schools want to see that baseline before you move on and finish the pro or before you're accepted. Um, someone else will speak more about that later. And then uh, letters of recommendation. These may be required from a number of schools. Sometimes it's two, sometimes it's three, uh, but these should be from people you know in a creative or professional sense. So that could be like your art teacher, your guidance counselor, or it could be someone who mentors you out in the community. Say you're part of something like uh, scouts where you may have a scout leader, but again, it should also demonstrate your artistic abilities. So someone who knows you in that artistic sense would be best. And then uh, there are requirements for essays or artist statements. Uh, these vary from school to school. So again, checking in with that school would be best, mostly because um, some may want to know more about your art practice, which is an artist statement, or there may be some that want to know a personal essay, so more about you. So um, definitely start that research. And then of course, all of us do require proof of English proficiency. And that would be through an exam such as the TOEFL, IELTS, or Duolingo. Uh, more and more schools are accepting Duolingo and it's an affordable at home option. Um, but the one last thing I wanted to mention, which isn't on this slide, um, is about ACT and SAT. So a lot of schools in the US have stopped requiring ACT or SAT. So all of us here today do not require these exams as part of the application process. That does not mean every school in the US has stopped using it. But again, check in with the school and see if they are test blind, which is what we are, I'm assuming all of us. Um, and then there are test optional schools where you can choose to send it or not choose to send it. And then of course, the schools that do require SAT or ACT. So that's another thing for that spreadsheet that you keep because it'll help you be prepared on if you need to actually complete that exam if any of your schools that you're looking at require that. So it's there. Okay, the fun part <laughs> is the art, the artwork, um, the portfolio. Um, so uh, one thing just to clarify is that all of our schools are visual art and design schools. So if, if anyone is looking for um, theater or dance or music programs, um, I, I'm not gonna be talking about that. I'm gonna be only talking about the visual art portfolio for visual art and design colleges. Um, so the portfolio is by far the most important part of the application. Um, all of the accredited art schools, as uh, Mike was talking about in the beginning, will require a portfolio. Um, one uh, red flag or something just to watch out for are schools that do not require a portfolio. Um, I, not to say that they're all um, bad, but um, if they don't require a portfolio going in, they may not um, have the amount of support that you'll need going out. Um, all of us uh, will make sure that you have the portfolio that will provide a job when you graduate. So um, the portfolio, first of all, uh, my first bit of advice for you is to make art as much as you can. Get a sketchbook, 
work inside of school, work outside of school, take advantage of pre-college programs. All of us offer those. Um, make sure that you are you know, doing research on artists that you really enjoy. Um, being in Spain, you, are, ha you have a fantastic advantage um, having so many incredible museums and galleries to go to. So that's really important. Um, and it is uh, really important that you really do what you love to do. Don't do what you think the school wants to see. Um, that said, I know that there are many different types of curriculums. Um, many of you may be doing IB. Uh, if you uh, have an AP curriculum, that's another kind of form. There are A-level courses. Um, and we accept students from all over the world, from all different types of curriculums. So the portfolio is not going to be based on the curriculum that you are studying in in, in high school. It's going to be a curated body of work that you create. Um, and it's the work can come from high school, it can come from outside of high school, um, but it is basically a, a body of work, typically speaking between 10 and 20 finished artworks. Um, again, this is very specific to the US. Um, the UK has some different requirements, but for the most part, we want to see finished work. Um, meaning that if you are in IB and you are doing a ton of research and um, you, know, you have the process uh, boards that you are creating, um, it is definitely okay to show um, some process if it is really important in your work, but the finished body of work is really what we're looking for. Um, so just some points uh, on the slide here to point out to you are, uh, first of all, ACAD. Um, which is an incredible resource uh, we mentioned in the beginning where you can actually get portfolio reviews from any of the ACAD schools. So you just go to that site, you can upload um, five images of your artwork and you can select from any of the ACAD schools and we will email you back with, um, with feedback. The other fantastic resource is the National Portfolio Day organization. Um, so this has actually become more international um, as other schools participate. Um, but basically this is more of like a live event. Um, there's one coming up this weekend. If one of my colleagues wants to uh, put that in the chat, that would be awesome. Um, so that will be in the virtual space, uh, an opportunity to um, have your portfolio in a digital format. And then you can select the schools that you would like to speak with and have like a 10 to 15 minute um, conversation. Don't be intimidated by the portfolio review. Really, uh, a portfolio review is a conversation that you're having with the admission counselors about um, where your work is now, ideas about where your work can go, um, really talking about the spec specifications for each school. Uh, because again, we'll sound like a broken record on this, but every art school is going to be different in what they require. Um, some require, um, or they have a prompt, or they have a specific assignment for you. Others are completely wide open. Um, MICA is an example of a school where you can submit any type of work, and it does not have to be specific to a major. There are other types, um, like Sasha's school, CCS, that are direct entry. So you will be making a portfolio that is more specific to the area of study that you would like to pursue. Um, so again, getting a portfolio review is not only an excellent way for you to learn about all of those differences, but it's also a way for us to get to know you, to make a personal connection um, which can really actually help with admission and scholarship. We, we look at these things when we are um, allocating scholarship um, to see if you were really engaged as a high school student. Um, so I highly, highly recommend you get a portfolio review, at least one, if not five, before you graduate. We'll go on to the next slide. Okay, so um, just getting kind of more into the technical pieces um, for fine art and design portfolios. Um, I did mention the number of pieces between 10 and 20. So when um, I say 10 and 20, um, and you have slides that you can upload into Slide Room or the platform that is used, that does not mean four finished works and the rest of the slides are process of those four finished works. This truly does mean 
a very minimum of 10 finished artworks. Um, and we love to see a combination of your skills, skills you know, in drawing, your understanding of color, your understanding of design. Um, if you are using a specific material, your, your command of that material, um, we accept two-dimensional, three-dimensional, four-dimensional, uh, time-based pieces, performance pieces, uh, but the skill level um, really shows that you have an understanding of that. So what you want to avoid is throwing pieces into the portfolio to just show us that you know how to do it. Um, you know, putting in uh, some sculptural pieces, even though you're not familiar with that process. Don't, don't do that. Um, we just want to see the best, best, best work that you have. Think about it like you are curating an exhibition or you are putting these works onto a professional website, for example. Um, what are the works that you would choose and how do they sort of fit together? Um, we like to see uh, in a, the most... Um, successful portfolios, we love to see the conceptual side. We love to see your ideas and your creativity. Um, so let that shine, let it be something that's really enjoyable for you and um, make a connection between the pieces, even if they are of different types of materials. Um, we have an entire session that is just on portfolios. I could go on and on and talk about this, but uh, again, just to reiterate, get a portfolio review, make art inside and outside of school, and um, this will really help drive your work. And then finally, um, talking about documentation. So these days, especially, we are only seeing your work in the digital space. So that means if you are making a thing, an object, um, whether it's two-dimensional or three-dimensional or um, even a video, um, we are only limited to this little screen that we have to see your work. So make sure you're taking excellent photos. Um, they can be with um, a digital camera, ideally, but they also can be with a high resolution um, smartphone if you have one. And um, you just want to make sure that those are very clear and accurate to the work that you are presenting. Um, and you can definitely show sketchbook work if it is really developed. Um, I, I like to recommend to have a video. So just tag some of the best parts of your sketchbook and take like a short little video um, of your work to show those off. Um, if you do make time-based work, um, if you are making videos, keep it less than five minutes. Um, even better would be less than one minute because we are looking at thousands of portfolios and only have limited time. Um, so making like a, a demo reel or something like that uh, for animation or film um, is a really good way to handle that. Um, let's see. And you want to make sure that the curation is, um, is considered. So, you know, take us through a journey of, of your work, um, where you have sort of evolved and where it has taken you. Um, you can sort of group things by media. You can group things um, if you have a series of work. Um, and, you know, again, we as admission counselors can help you with that. Um, super important, last point, don't pre-format your work. Meaning, um, if you are putting together uh, a PDF or Google Slides for school and um, you have the text and everything around the work, let's take this slide, for example, is your piece that you uh, are submitting for IB. If you put this into the platform when you are applying, um, it is going to limit the amount of space that we have to see the work. Um, so in Slide Room, there is a very specific area to upload an image and that image should only be the art. And then there's another space that Slide Room or the platform will give to you for a title, the medium, um, the year that you made it and a short description if you want to add one. So um, we can show examples of that again in the portfolio review.